Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snatus where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our 5 minute review playlist. In previous videos, we talked about nephritic syndrome, nephrotic syndrome, neonatal conjunctivitis, transient tachypnea of the newborn, meconium aspiration syndrome, as well as amniotic fluid embolism. Today, let's shift gears and talk about superior vena cava syndrome, which could be caused by pancose tumor which could be caused by lung cancer if it involves the apex of the lung, such as squamous cell carcinoma or small cell lung cancer. Recall from your anatomy that your superior vena cava drains the upper part of the body and then drains that blood into the right atrium of your heart. Please watch the videos in this 5-minute review playlist in order. And watch my video titled Lung Cancer. You'll find this in my pulmonology playlist. We divide lung diseases in general into five categories and all of them can present with cough and or dyspnea which means shortness of breath these five categories include obstructive lung diseases restrictive lung diseases pulmonary vascular abnormalities like pulmonary embolism infections and cancer these lung cancers could be bronchogenic carcinoma in the bronchial tree alveolar cell cancer in the alveoli or metastasis coming from somewhere else to the lungs, such as liver cancer metastasizing to the lung. Please remember that if it's a primary lung cancer, it's usually a singular lesion. However, if it's coming from somewhere else and metastasizing to the lung, it's usually multiple lesions. We call it cannonball, like a shower of cancers. And in my video on amniotic fluid embolism, we talked about showers of emboli. In medicine, we have all kinds of shower. What is pancose tumor? It's superior sulcus tumor, right here near your clavicle. Usually, lung cancer in the lung apex, and this could be small cell lung cancer or squamous cell lung cancer. Complications include Horner syndrome. Why? Because you impinge on the stellate ganglion, aka the superior cervical ganglion, which is sympathetic, causing epsilateral Horner syndrome, which is ptosis, meiosis, and hydrosis. Moreover, I can press on the brachial plexus leading to upper extremity weakness on the same side. Also, this pressure on the brachial plexus or pressure on the phrenic nerve can lead to shoulder pain. Hoarseness of voice or dysphonia can also happen because I press on the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Facial edema and plethora can happen due to compression of the superior vena cava or the brachiocephalic vein. What are the causes of superior vena cava syndrome? Could be malignant causes or non-malignant causes. Malignant causes could be primary lung cancer at the apex of the lung, could be lymphoma, especially the ferricose lymph node, or metastasis to the lungs. Non-malignant causes include goiter of the thyroid gland, aortic aneurysm, fibrosing mediastinitis, benign tumors like thymoma. Don't forget that thymoma is associated with myasthenia gravis, which causes muscle weakness that gets worse on repetitive activity. Conversely, small cell lung cancer is associated with Lambert-Eaton myasthenic syndrome, which causes muscle weakness that gets better on repetitive movement. As the cancer presses on the superior vena cava, less blood will return to the heart. Most of the blood will pool here. This piling up of blood will lead to facial edema, plethora, facial swelling, neck swelling, and opening of anastomoses or collaterals, and you will find visible distended veins on the anterior chest wall. Some doofuses call these spider nevi or spider angiomata. Nonsense! because spider angiomata are caused by excessive estrogen, such as in cirrhosis. Spider angiomata are not caused by superior vena cava obstruction. Too much congestion can lead to leaking and oozing of blood to surrounding tissue, including your airways or lungs, leading to cough and shorts of breath. Less blood return to the right atrium, meaning less input equals less output, and since Blood pressure equals cardiac output times total peripheral resistance, I will get low blood pressure and symptoms of low cardiac output like dizziness, fatigue, inability to concentrate. Vital signs, tachypnea, tachycardia, hypotension. Why tachypnea? Because of the leak. Why hypotension? Because less input equals less output. Why tachycardia? This is the baroreceptor reflex. 
When you have hypotension, your brain will realize, oh, danger, danger. Let me cause tachycardia by talking to the sympathetic nervous system then. On inspection, the patient's face is swollen, puffy, and having plethora with bluish purplish discoloration. The neck is swollen, shoulders swollen, neck veins, jugular venous distension, and don't forget the collaterals that you will see on the patient's chest. By palpation, you can actually empty or milk these vessels, and if they empty, it proves to you that these are veins. Next, you can find positive Pemberton sign. What's that? Ask your patient to raise both arms above the head. In normal people, nothing happens. But in people with superior vena cava syndrome, what's gonna happen? You get facial swelling, neck swelling, cough, dyspnea, respiratory distress, because by raising both hands above your arm, you make this compression or obstruction more obvious and easier to notice. Radiologically, CT scan with contrast will show you the lesion. Pemberton sign is kind of similar, but not identical to Adson sign. In Adson sign, you ask the patient to abduct and externally rotate the shoulder, and the radial pulse will disappear and you can see this in cases of lymphoma, especially this varicose node, or congenital cervical rib. Complications, obstruction of the trachea, respiratory distress, hypotension and reflex tachycardia, cyanosis, retinal hemorrhage because of the congestion, and stroke because of low cardiac output, i.e. ischemic stroke. How can we manage this? Mild cases, head elevation, diuretics. You can place a stent, but if the patient is stage 4 lung cancer and is about to die, there is no point in going aggressive on the SVC syndrome, because SVC syndrome is a symptom to a bigger underlying issue. If you want to learn more about acute respiratory distress syndrome, hypothermia, drowning, toxicology, download my emergency medicine high yields course at medicosisperfectionetis.com. If you want to learn about colon cancer, breast cancer, trauma surgery, orthopedic surgery, general surgery, download my surgery high yields course. If you want to learn about vulvar cancer, vaginal cancer, cervical cancer, uterine cancer, ovarian cancer, download my OBGYN high yields course. Also at medicosisperfectionetis.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionetis, where medicine makes perfect sense.